and there it goes into first and just have some fun. Oh, so satisfying. Hey crew, I've got the key to that 23 Dodge Challenger Swinger. We are gonna take it for a drive, but first let's check it out. It looks on the inside and outside. These Swinger last call models are based on the Challenger and Charger Scat Pack wide body and are limited to just 1,000 units. The Challenger gets RT badges on the inside of these intakes slash turn signals. On the hood are optional Mopar pins. This one is painted in Sublime, but you can also get F8 green and white knuckle. The Challenger has the shaker hood, which is functional and has soft gold accents on it to match the soft gold of 20 inch alloy wheels that are within widened fender flares. There are Brembo six piston brakes up front and the tires are Pirelli P0 all seasons, 305 section front and rear. I do wanna thank the OC motivator, Brad, for letting me review his Challenger Swinger. And if you like Mopar content, check out Brad's channel. He's got a ton of it. Here at the side, I dig the erupting shaker hood and all swingers get those decals on the rear three quarter. Here at the back are LED taillights and turn signals. Above those, a Scat Pack logo with Rumble B badge on the black lip spoiler. And beneath are two chrome exhaust outlets. The Swinger Edition doesn't really transform the car, but the fact that it includes that awesome shaker hood and those wheels adds some appeal for me. I think I would go with the F8 green color though. My question for you, What's the best looking of these last call special editions? Let me know in the comments and let's check out the interior. Opening up and looking inside at this black interior, which is the only color option for the Swinger. It's got dark green accents on the seats, which have leather borders and Alcantara inserts and hash marks on the seat backs. They're heated and ventilated with power slide manual recline. On the doors, they're nice soft touch materials, more of those dark green accents, two one touch windows, power adjusting and not power folding door mirrors, two positions of memory for the driver's seat, hard plastics down here, Alpine sound system, and three aluminum accented foot pedals because we've got the manual gearbox. If we hit this button here to the left of the wheel, it will release the trunk lid, not send it up though. Inside, we're gonna find 16 cubic feet of space and if you need more room, you can release the seats from inside 6040. To get into the Challenger's back seats, there's a handle here on the side, but that doesn't automatically send the seat sliding forward. You gotta do that manually. You're gonna make me get back there, aren't you? Okay, here I am at six feet tall behind my own seating position and my knees are pressed into the seat back. My head is pressed against the roof. This is a no-go situation for tall adults, maybe smaller ones, maybe kids. Still gonna be a thumbs down from me. There are armrests on the side and there's another one that comes down in the middle with cup holders plus air vents. All right. Now in the driver's seat with the car on because I need AC not to die. Door close noise is decently solid even with the frameless windows. Not a ton of rattle from those. The steering wheel is heated and leather wrapped. Feels good in the hands. It's got a flat bottom design going on here. Digital TFT display is reconfigurable. On the swinger, you get white backgrounds for the analog dials for the speedo and tack. No head up display injection molding up on the dashboard. You get a swinger badge over on the passenger side and we're still rocking the 8.4 inch Uconnect 4 software infotainment system. It's not terribly slow. It does have a volume knob here and tuner, drive mode settings there, physical climate controls. And on the swinger, we also have this wood style plastic trim. It is textured, that's nice. Still prefer the carbon fiber and then leather wrapping for your gear selector and shift boot on the leather top console. Inside is filled with stuff right now but it does have a decent bit of space with two USB-A ports. Visibility, uh, there's a pretty big blind spot at that C pillar. There is standard blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic. And this is my headroom situation in the driver's seat. Plenty of it without a sunroof, so that gets the thumbs up. And the cabin does have some subtle upgrades. I'm a sucker for the white dials and the Swinger logo over on the passenger side. And of course, the six speed manual. Let's take the Swinger Edition Challenger for a drive next. All right, let's fire it up. It's a fun Rumble B animation on the TFT display. And a rumble indeed from that Hemi V8 on startup. 
Hello cabin crew, thank you for joining me for this drive in the Challenger Swinger and before we can go anywhere we have to release the footwell truck style e-brake that's still here after all these years and right up to the end of production for the Challenger. Our drive mode selected here we've got track, sport, custom and auto and in custom mode you can configure your suspension, your traction control and your steering. Let's begin in auto though and with the gear selector go all the way over to the right and up that brings up a screen filling but very grainy low resolution backup camera we do have trajectory lines that's nice and we'll back on out of here and begin as usual with a turning radius test straightened up wheel fully cranked And it doesn't matter how many times I do it, it always impresses me how tight the turning circle is on the Challenger. Even the Scat Pack wide body with these 305 section tires pivots around so nicely. Makes it so much less daunting to maneuver. And the world famous horn test is up next. Hmm. It's a chipper horn. I was expecting something more deep and baritone like the exhaust in the Challenger Swinger. Turn signal sound now. It's honestly a little obnoxious. It's loud. I would turn that off as soon as I possibly could. At least the engine note kind of drowns it out. And what is making that engine note, Miles? Well, glad you asked, dear viewer. It's a 6.4 liter naturally aspirated Hemi V8 that makes 485 horsepower and 475 pound-feet of torque. That output is identical to the standard Scat Pack wide body Challenger and Charger, as is the ability to choose either a six-speed Tremec manual or an eight-speed torque converter automatic. And I'm really glad Brad chose the six-speed manual because it's been a long time since I drove a Challenger with the six-speed and it being a Tremec gearbox, means it's pretty solid. Tremec also makes the six-speed in my Cadillac CT5V Blackwing, though here it's a little different. For one, the gear lever is much longer in this car than in mine. It's angled towards the driver just slightly, and the throws are definitely longer than in my car. The gates also aren't as well defined as in my Blackwing, and so that means if you're just driving this for the first time, you're going to have to get used to where exactly you're going to throw your arm to get into the next gear. Thankfully, the notch into each gear is very clearly defined. You're not gonna mistake whether you're in gear or not. And the clutch pickup and release is so well defined that this car becomes very easy to drive. Again, after maybe your first time behind the wheel. And it's more satisfying that way as well because of the feel and engagement factor that comes with operating the six speed. This is just a little more involved than your standard Challenger with the 8-speed automatic and just adds to that classic vibe of this car. It's the most retro designed muscle car and with the 6-speed it definitely feels retro. The ride quality from these adaptive dampers and the stiffened suspension of the Scat Pack package is definitely firm. I'm bouncing around quite a bit over undulating road surfaces but the dampening does keep the bumps and ruts from really rattling me in this seat, which by the way is phenomenal. Among the most comfortable chairs I've ever sat in in a car, and it doesn't even have all that much adjustment. The bolsters are just very wide and supportive, and I found a great driving position for myself. I just, I love sitting in these seats, and it could make this car a very agreeable commuter, even with that firmer ride quality. You gotta love the Hemi noise. Just so good, even at relatively low speeds, just extracting a little bit of that power is pure satisfaction. The brakes are bitey, but easy to modulate, not too, too grabby. And the power delivery here in normal with that naturally aspirated engine 
is perfectly adjustable. You can easily get it to the speed you want, never startle yourself, but never be lacking in motivation. I love looking out over that shaker hood as well. Moving just a little bit inside the hood cutout. It just feels so cool, it feels so retro. Something that the Challenger does better than any of its muscle car competitors. And I haven't driven a shaker equipped Challenger to this point, and I'm so glad that I have now. The Swinger name, in case you're curious, it's not for some unfaithful married adults. It is taken from the Dart Swinger from the late 60s and early 70s. And so the name is bizarre in today's terms, but it has some of that classic Dodge notoriety and is appropriate for the last call models. That rumble is just unmistakable. It couldn't be anything other than a Hemi-powered Challenger. And just being able to tap into it whenever you want is a power that I don't know if I can be trusted with. I'm gonna have to be trusted with the 6.2 Hemi supercharged Demon, when that is produced, cannot wait for that car. And driving even a lesser Challenger has me all the more excited for it. I'm gonna move into the sport drive mode next, which perks up throttle response. Doesn't change the exhaust volume per se, but makes you feel sportier. Makes you feel like you wanna tap in all the more often. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm a child, I am. I'll tell you one thing that's definitely happened in sport. These adjusting dampers have stiffened up. It's gonna be handy because we're now gonna take a corner onto the highway. Brembo stop us, body wants to lean and dive though. During the curve, see if I can get us to misbehave. Uh, plows the nose a little bit, kind of surprising given the rear drive setup, but not surprising given the weight transfer that's going on here. The beefier front and rear sway bars did their best to curtail all this body moving in the corner. The brakes felt up to snuff and the wider 305 section tires, though they are all seasons, did provide pretty good grip. I wanted to wait to shift, I really did. 6,000 RPM comes in real quick when you have this much power. But uh, yeah, it did okay, did okay in a corner. You're on the highway just at a cruising speed. Pop it into sixth and hang out for a sec. The NVH level is respectable. I've said this before in my Charger or Challenger reviews, but the cabin is decently well insulated for this price point, even at the inflated $60,000 that we're driving here, 66,000, whatever it is. But considering what, what it's based on, a high $30,000 muscle car, just almost saw two semi-trucks collide. This is pretty good. We have some tire noise. Big wide tires make some hum, that makes sense. Road noise isn't horrible though, past some big trucks and it wasn't a cacophony of noise inside the cabin. And the wind noise, even for something that's not very aerodynamic, it's really not bad. Only takes a little bit of maintenance throttle to keep your speed as well. And importantly, the tires are not tram lining over different surfaces in the road. They're not pulling you with the grooves in the road one direction or the other. So you can just kind of relax into these cushy chairs and enjoy the Challenger Swinger as a commuter should you need it for that. The fuel economy will get you though. 17 combined, but I mean, driven realistically, 15 combined, that'll, uh, that'll add up. And I think we do owe it to ourselves to do a couple quick pulls here on the highway with gaps. There is no rev match function, so I'm blipping the throttle myself. And mid-range from 3,000, not strong. Don't worry about those passing maneuvers. You can make them with ease. Let's do third gear from around 4,000. 
That's much better. Once again, the 6,000 RPM red line cutoff comes in so early. I want to wait even to 6,500, but this manual car cut off is 6,000. And there it is again, just as I'm in mid pull, mid fun. But so good. God, I love a muscle car. I love a Dodge muscle car. I'm gonna miss these. I'm getting all emotional here. I'm really gonna miss these. This is so good. What a noise. I see it, Nothing to see here. And I do want to see how quick the Challenger Swinger gets to 60 with the six speed manual in a real world context, meaning there's gravel on the side of the road here. This won't be the fastest run, but it's what we got today. Got my race box set up to record, and there is launch control even on the manual car. You can set your RPM for launch here between 2,500 and 4,500. I'm not gonna go too crazy because I don't want just tire spin. So we'll do 2,800 RPM. You activate the launch, clutch into first gear, clutch fully engaged, full throttle, release the clutch, tire spin, tire spin, tire spin. And we're finally moving, short shifting to keep traction. And there's 60 in 5.88 seconds. Good for smoke shows, not for zero to 60 runs in the Challenger Swinger. Now, if you did want a proper smoke show, there's the line lock function to lock up the front brakes and just spin the rear rubber, or there's somewhere in between, like track drive mode with traction control fully defeated, which takes a second here. And there it goes, into first and just have some fun. Oh, so satisfying. And rest assured, folks, I'm not just having fun at Brad's tire expense, without his knowledge at least. The last thing he said to me before he handed me the keys and went inside was, smoke them if you want to. Thank you, Brad. I really wanted to, and the Challenger Swinger did not disappoint. And that's going to lead me into my miles per hour word of the day, which for the 23 Challenger Swinger is audacious meaning a willingness to take bold risks. That's this car 218. It's the shouty lime green paint job, the raucous Hemi V8 motor seen through that shaker hood, the tire smoke that will no doubt ensue, the six speed manual gearbox. It is an audacious machine. And if you are drawn to that, I don't know what's better for this kind of money. But we will, of course, find out what other things you can consider. First, let's talk top speed and fuel economy. The top speed of the Challenger Swinger is 176 miles per hour, and the fuel economy is 14 MPG in the city, 23 on the highway, and 17 combined. But good luck seeing that. The starting price for the Challenger Swinger, in fact, all Challenger Swingers, is $66,815 because they're all shipped the same way. You can add dealer accessories like Brad did for the hood pins for a thousand bucks, but they're just all gonna be kind of a one-stop shop. So anyone saying we're custom ordering our cars is not true. They're just putting money down at a dealership with allocation. Alternatives in this muscle car segment. We've got the Chevy Camaro SS, for the 24 model year being its last, it starts at $44,000. It makes 455 horsepower, gets to 60 in 4.2 seconds, has a top speed of 165 miles per hour and fuel economy of 20 combined. And then there's the 24 Mustang GT in its all new, all new generation that starts at $43,000. It makes 480 horsepower, gets to 60 in 4.8 seconds, has a top speed of 155 miles per hour and fuel economy tying this at 17 combined. So both of those cars are a lot less expensive than the Challenger Swinger, but are they as much of a novelty? And here's the part where I defend the statement I made earlier that for the money, this is one of the most audacious cars you can buy. Yes, there are other V8 powered muscle cars. and You can even have them in some wild colors, at least until the Camaro kicks the bucket next year. But they're trying to be real proper sports cars and they're better for it if that's what you're looking for. If you're looking for precision and pace, then those are gonna suit you better. If you're looking for a statement though, if you're looking for something with big cushy chairs and these big proportions and a shaker hood, then those aren't gonna satisfy you. 
and we're not going to have these things after this year. In fact, Dodge has already ended production of the Charger and Challenger at the point that I've made this video, but they're still on dealer lots, and now they can be had for MSRP. Brad paid MSRP for this car just two weeks ago, and the dealership at first was going to give him a market adjusted price of like 10 grand over. He said, I'm not interested. He walked away. They called him back later that day, and he ended up paying MSRP. So there's hope out there if you want something like this, and a great number of reasons why you might. If given the option, which would you guys choose? Would you go for the Challenger Swinger? Would you go for the Ford Mustang GT? Or would you have the Chevy Camaro SS? Let me know in the comments, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I want to thank Brad once again for letting me review his Challenger Swinger. Go check out his channel. It's the OC Motivator. And if you like this video, please like, comment, and share it. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell to get notified. And I'll see you again next time.